there are a number of ways to combine functions to make new functions. Let's take a look how we can compose a new function out of two existing functions. Let's say we have a function f of x that's equal to x squared plus 3 and a function g of x that's equal to x minus 2. We'll make a new function f of x, capital of f of x, which is composed of f and g, and we write it this way, f o g of x. And order is important here, with f first and g second. What that means is that we're going to place the g of x function within the f of x function. So we're starting with the g of x function. Now let's look at it in a diagrammatic form. So we have inputs that go into the g of x function, or the g machine, and we have an output. And in turn, the output from g becomes the input for the f function. So this two-step process then becomes the combined FOG function. Okay, so let's work it out. We've got g of x equaling x minus 2, so we can write this as f at x minus 2. So this output here becomes the input for the f of x function, so the x minus 2 goes into the x here, and we would get x minus 2 squared plus 3. We could leave the answer like this, but I could do some algebra to expand this out. And if we did that and added the 3, we'd end up with x squared minus 4x plus 7. Well, what if we went the other way? Let's say we want to make a new function g of x, which we compose from g and f. So what this means is we're going to go the other way. We're going to start with inputs here into the f function first, and the output from the f function becomes the input for the g function, which gives us the final output, and this would become the composed g or f function. All right, so this would give us g of f of x. So we're starting with f of x, and f of x equals x squared plus 3. So that goes into here, g x squared plus 3. And that becomes the input for the g function, so it goes in there. And we would end up with x squared plus 3 minus 2. And if we solve that, we get x squared plus 1. We can test it out. Let's have an input. Let's say we pick a number 1 that goes into the f function. Okay, so 1 goes in. So 1 goes into the f function. So 1 squared plus 3 gives us an output of 4. And then 4 goes into the g function, which means it goes in here. So 4 minus 2 gives us an output of 2. Now let's compare. Let's go take the 1 and put it directly into our composed function. So 1 into x squared gives me 1 plus 1 is 2. We get the same output. One thing to note here, because we're going in opposite directions, that the composed function f o g of x does not equal g o f of x. In other words, these are not the same thing. Let's take a look at another example. Here we're using three functions instead of two to compose a new function. So let's make a new function f of x and compose it as follows. f o g o h of x. So again, order is important. So we'd start with h, and the output of h would go into g, and then that output would then be, go into f. So diagrammatically, we have input into h. We get output that becomes the input for g. We get output that becomes the input for f. 
and we get the final result. So this represents the composed function f of g o h. Okay, let's work it through. So this would be f of g of h of x. So start with h of x, which is x minus 9, and stick it into g of x. So this would give us f g of x minus 9. And then placing that into g of x, we would end up with f at sine x minus 9. And then we take that and place it into the f function, which would give us sine x minus 9 all squared. Now we don't always have to go in the order f, g, then h. We could start with h, compose with g, and then with f. Or we could go f to h and then to g. Try some questions, get some practice, and see how you do. There you go.